Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about prime distribution, and there's a thing that we got to understand about uh, ratios before I f finish up what I'm going to talk about is this right here. Is that ratios two dogs to one cat or one cat to two dogs? That's the word form or one colon two or one over two and that's the ratio but the thing with the ratios the thing with the ratios is that's the ratio for uh Riemann's hypothesis one over two but two cat two dogs to one cat if I were to put three doors, two dogs, and one cat behind each door, what are the odds that you're going to pick a cat? The ratio is saying that you got a 50% shot at picking the cat, which doesn't make sense. Because when we think of flipping, when we think of a one in two odds, we think of flipping a coin, like a quarter, heads or tails, that's one in two odds. But then there's the urban legend or the the people that are smart aleck and saying what if it lands on its edge so there's an extra uh, variable there that we don't that most times we don't consider and essentially if I were to pick the door that had a cat pick a door that could have either a cat or, or two dogs one of the three if I pick one door I'm betting that I want a cat. I'm betting the door I ha that I pick has a cat. But if I'm given the option to change, well, if the door I'm thinking has the cat, then either of the other two doors will be what I don't want. But if the door I pick doesn't have the cat, then either way, if I pick the other door, I still have a 50-50 shot of uh, gaining a cat or losing a cat. But in but the same thing with the quarter. I bet on heads, but there's still two options that it won't land on heads. But then it doesn't make sense because when we're thinking about the quarter, we're taking away a number in our imagination. But if I have two friends to my one apple and I want each of my friends to have an apple, the only way for me to give that apple to them is to split it in half, which is how we get 1.5 or 0.5. But okay, that's all I'm going to talk about the ratios for now. And this is a uh, something that the equations that I've written, which I'm not sure if I entirely wrote them correctly. N stands for number, which could be a number. A is any real number, any real positive whole number. B is P times 10. P equals prime, a prime number. W equals a whole number. And you'll see why we do that is if we plug in a, a prime number here, we're essentially saying that the prime plus uh, 10 prime, which let's say 3, 3 plus 30 times a number equals a number. And then when that number is divided by P, it'll equal a whole number, which is why I have that set up like that. But then here's the brackets to fully get advantage of the formula is P plus 0 times P P plus 2 times P and so on and so forth and that I'll show you what it does in a minute but then there's another thing with prime numbers is 15 times any number equals a spot where twin primes can only be 15 times even numbers equals spots where twin primes 9 1 lie 15 times odd numbers equals spots where twins 1, 3, and 7, 9 lie. And 
essentially that those formulas come out to creating things like this is well I think I skipped ahead uh, but it'll create this pattern right here where it goes 3, 13, 23 or the one where it equals uh, P, it'll be this line right here 3, 33, 63, 93, 123 but all these numbers have one thing in common is that they're divisible by 3 so when we know that they're divisible by 3 something very odd happens with them is that we divide them by 3 is 1, 1, 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, but then when we start dividing every third one, it becomes this divided by 3. It would be 7, 17, 27, 37, 47, 57, but then every third one of those we can divide by 3. It equals 9, 19, 29, 39, and so on. But that pattern is pretty much jumping. 3's jump to the 1's, which is right there, which... ones will turn into sevens and the reason I'm saying that's the same pattern is on the threes if you check where we have the ones every third one is when we divide by three 21 51 21 51 81 and as you see if we do every third one again it comes into nine and that divided by three is three so now we got the threes threes coming back in and that one went to nines so nine it turns into threes three thirteen twenty three thirty three so on and so forth but then the ones changed into the sevens and then here's the sevens 27 27 57 57 but you'll see that it continues and it'll restart the pattern every time and well so those patterns are this but then these two lines are the only lines that are going to hold primes. There will never be a prime on this line except in a multiplication form, which for example is 63 times 7 or divided by 7 equals 9. But now I got to go through and start finding the 7s and how do I do that? Well, order start dividing by 7 one. But no, the what I figured out is by counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. Number divisible by seven. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. Another number. Two hundred three divided by seven. And then right here in this number line is one, two, three, four, six, seven. Boom. Another number divided by. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This number is divisible by seven, but it'll keep doing it in each line. And the reason why is because of this. When we take uh, seven, the prime seven and start adding it into this formula right here we'll start getting this right right here and it'll and this one is numbers that end in seven that will only be divisible by seven but the reason why that happens is because of p times ten
that's that's why this P times 10 is very important but we can't change that constant or else this whole thing would fall apart that's the constant that's bringing these to light and if we do it with the next one same thing 11 so on and so forth it'll keep repeating 11s and 1s but then you see that the 7s don't match up with these ones but uh, they will like right 101 and then boom now they that's where 7 and 11 line up but uh, another thing that I'll talk about is that you can honestly do this for any num even even numbers but the same thing will happen with even numbers is that it'll come out into lines like 2 12 because this is base 10 that's why we're doing these gaps 2 12 22 32 42 52 I left this out because it's only divisible by 3 and I just wanted to see where the primes lined up but as you see the primes that this is pointing out is 11 31 this will continue and it but how the line that was divisible by three over here kept repeating switching from numbers to numbers every third one this would do the same thing because 12 divides into four the next one will be 42 which divides into 14 so it'll start becoming 4 14 uh 24 and then 24 is divided by 8 which if we are divided by 3 which when we divide wait no that would be 4 14 24 yeah, we divide by three and we get eight, and then it'll go eight, eighteen, and twenty-eight, eighteen is divisible by three, but we're going to divide it by nine, and or well, no, we divide it by three and it'll be six, and then it'll go from six to. 16 to 26 but we already know 6 is divisible by 3 which will go into 2 and then we're back all the way but essentially this these two lines right here are going to line up in these two lines because 11 31, 41, 61, 71. <laughs> 11, 31, 41, 61, 71, 101, 131. And 11, 31, 41, 61, 71, 101, 131. This one is divisible by uh 13 i think seven yeah which is one three but essentially if we know all the spots that 13 can be on the number three line and the number nine and the ones lines and the sevens lines we'll be able to if we take how this is in sevens, if we line them up to one, two, three, one of these three numbers is divisible by three, which is this one. So we take that seven, 
and we line it up it'll be on the th on the line that's divisible by three boom but then now we know every spot where seven where a number is divisible by 13 11 247 337 24 and all we're doing is adding by the constant of p times p times 10 which is what's happening and the reason I was talking about the imaginary number earlier with uh, the primes is that negative uh, Okay, go back. So essentially the patterns are revolving around three and even the one half is revolving around three because you need three doors to have the two cats and the one dog ratio, which is what a fraction is. And then when we look here, right, when we look here, this number falls on that ratio as it's three, but then so does this. This is 11 over 22, this one's 21 over 42 that's why these numbers are constantly doing this 7 over 14 uh, I, I can't memorize everything but 3 over 6 and the thing about this on how this works is is this is sieve of erothanus er, erothanus where we do counting uh starting from two one two four one two six and then starting at three we count one two three one two three and we keep doing this it, that's the sieve of Erythosinus and while I was uh I've been working on this pattern for two years when I've when you take the numbers and just have odd numbers and you start at three like how you're starting at two up here to start the counting starting at three here you count one two three nine one two three fifteen one two three twenty one but if you keep up the counting such as that that's every third one will be divided by three and I've done a, one of the original sleeves sieves that I've done is where I start above 10 just because it's slightly easier is 11 uh, 13 17 19 and then 21 23 well there's no point in writing 21 because that's divisible by 3 uh, 27 will be divisible by 3 but not 29 and then 31 and then not 33 37 not this one and uh, then right here, 41, 43, 47, and then 
seven, seventy one, seventy three, seventy nine. But you see how the pattern is repeating without any of the threes, right? But then if you notice right here, that's 15. And then uh, right, right here is 30. Right here, 45. Right here, 60. But, and you see twin primes on either side. And with this, I'm, I argue that negative 1 is a prime because if we plug negative 1 into this, it'll be negative 1 plus 0 times negative 1, which is 0. So negative 1 plus negative 1 times 10, which we're just going to leave all these as a... Uh, all these A's are going to be zero for right now. Just to show you is that so uh no well, no that's what that's for. So all that we're going to start at one on this is one 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 one. So negative. 1 plus negative 10 times 1 so that's negative 1 plus negative 10 which equals negative 11 yeah and this is 1 all right, here's one, and then here's going to be P times uh, plus negative two. And these spots count because this is the start of the pattern. So this will be negative two plus ten, negative ten, which is negative twelve. So that's going to be negative two. And then this is going to be negative five, so negative fifteen. This is going to be negative six. Uh, yeah. This is going to be negative seven, so negative 17. Right here, negative one times eight, that's going to be negative 19. And then when we divide by P, which we're saying is negative one prime, it turns into 11, 12, 15, 17, 19. Wait, wait, wait. I think I did something wrong. That's going to be 13, not 12. Because negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus that would equal negative 13. So that means this is starting at negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7, negative 9. But then as you keep repeating this section right here, that's what's happening on these over here and but when you divide these they come into real whole numbers which would be 11 13 15 17 19 and another reason why I'm arguing that negative 1 is a prime is that uh, 4. We divide that into 2. Well then, there we go, we're done. Well, let's do this. 2 equals 1. Well, now guess what? We got this 2 equals 1. Well, let's see what happens when uh, negative 2. We divide by 2 and negative 1. Well, we got negative 1. Well, let's divide by neg negative 1 equals 1. Negative. If you keep doing it, it's going to repeat. 
And then the Ezler special case about this is that all these patterns right here, you see how this one's a line of nines. This one's ones, sevens, and threes. Well, if we take this number and divide it by 17, that's going to be one, and then 11, 21, 31, 41, and then this is going to be three. Yeah. Three. Yep. So three, 13. 33 and then this is going to be 7 17 27 37 and then same thing for here and this is why these these sevens when they break down they break down to being ones they'll break down to that but honestly we don't need to break them down down because we want to keep knowing where all seven sevens are but uh okay but if we're seeing that all those numbers break down into those same patterns the same thing happens with negative ones because, okay, because if you start breaking this down, it'll be negative, it'll turn into 1 plus 11, or it'll be 1, 11, 21. Uh, and then if every third one, 21, you do the same thing like all the other ones, it'll essentially be the, it'll be repeating the patterns just like all the other primes. And then... Okay, look up at me. Uh, how every even number when is not a prime because it's divisible by two. The same concept applies to negative numbers is that none of them can be prime because of negative one. Negative one is prime, but one isn't prime. Which, I mean, show, and that means if we go negative on the or go negative on the line, there's not going to be any primes besides negative 1 because all of them are divisible by negative 1, just like 2. Every even number, no even number can be a prime because it's divisible by the number 2. But what this shows us is how many people tell you that when you look at these primes and see how many of them are odd and that but 1 can't be a prime... This what is showing what would happen if one was a prime, because then no number after it could be prime. And then when I was uh, talking about the ratios, uh, when I was talking about the ratios, how we need three doors, so suddenly we're adding an imaginary number, but in our heads when we look at one half, we're subtracting something out of the group because for us to think one half we don't need three doors we need two doors one door with a cat one door with a dog but our imagination is subtracting that third door that's supposed to be there so uh with that being said that in itself shows that all these numbers are collapsing into themselves in this pattern and they all follow the one two ratio and that twin primes can only lie on numbers that are 15 30 45 60 75 but with this uh with this right here if I plug in zero, 
as any any well maybe not any real positive whole number but let's say I plug that in as zero and zero sh is 30 because it's a space of 30 zero should fit in the pattern and in theory there should be a prime there but for uh, for what we say we say there is no prime but negative one is essentially a prime because it works in all the same manners as a prime but uh, and then any patterns any uh, formulas that rely on Euclid's uh, prime theorem where Q equals P to one two three dot 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 p 21 essentially all this these first three primes are what matter because it's two times three times five which equals 30 and when people discovered that plus or minus one is a potential to be a prime a prime whenever you do Euclid's with all the primes but essentially any prime after five that you multiply into this is just seven times three or seven times thirty eleven times uh, thirty tw thirteen times thirty it's all gonna keep repeating and that's why the only primes you're ever going to find with this are going to be primes ending in 9 or 1. And then sometimes they'll line up together to give you the twin primes, 9 and 1. But uh, if we take that out and see that primes lie at 15 how I was saying even or odd numbers times 15 because that's right here so that's 15 times 1 there's the primes 11 13 7 18, 19 and then the next time this happens is I think 7 times 15 Yep, uh, 7 times 15 comes out to 105, so 101, 103, 107, 109. This shows where another set of twins.